Hey everyone, and welcome back to our electronics tutorial series. My name is Aaron from AX Electronic, and today we are going to continue on the topic of op amps. So in the previous video, we sort of laid the foundation for op amps, talked a little bit about the op amp transfer function, which tells us how the output is related to the inputs. And then we also talked about how that output is bound by the rails, okay? So if you don't remember, the rails are the input power that we are providing to the op amp because these are active devices. They do have to have some sort of input power because we can't just create energy out of thin air. So we have to give it that input power for it to do all these cool things like amplify and oscillate. So because we have to provide that input power, that's actually setting a limit for our output voltage. So if we're providing plus and minus 10 volts, our output voltage cannot exceed those limits. So it's going to be bound by that input or by bound by the input power. So we can't go above 10 volts and we can't go below minus 10 volts. And that's going to be pretty important, especially in this video. So now that we've knocked out the basics, we can start talking about some of the cooler applications of these op amps. And the first thing that we're going to talk about is comparators. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of your way and we can start talking about comparators. So up at the very top, you can see the definition for a comparator. So a comparator tells us that it is a device that compares two signals, right? Who would have thought a comparator compares things? So it's going to compare two signals and it's going to output a digital signal that indicates which one is larger or which one is greater. So digital signal. Digital signal, signal tells us that this thing is either going to be on or off. Okay, so on or off. It can't be somewhere in between. Okay, so we're not going to expect a voltage that looks like this, right? So it's, that's all the stuff in between. That would be an analog signal. We're expecting it to be either on or off. Okay, so that's what we're expecting to see out of these signals. Okay, so for a digital signal, it's either going to be on or off. You might also hear zero or one. Okay, so we're going to try and make a comparator that compares two signals. So first thing is that we need to review that output formula. So this is the transfer function that I was just talking about. And that tells us that the output voltage V out is equal to AV. And remember this AV is really, really large. So it's gonna be much greater than 20,000. Okay, so really, really huge. And then this AV is going to amplify this differential signal here. So VN plus minus VN minus. Okay, so if VN plus is just a little bit greater. This is going to be positive. And whenever we have a really large number times a positive number, that's probably going to give us still a pretty large number, okay? But if this were the opposite, if this were instead negative, then it's going to give us a really large negative, okay? Now, AV, like we said, is really, really high. So we can actually simplify this formula a little bit. Since we know that maybe our signals are going to be a lot larger than one millivolt, and we're going to saturate this output very, very easily, we can actually simplify it. So what we can do is that we can just say V out, is equal to VDD if VN plus is greater than VN minus. Okay, so if VN plus is greater than VN minus, even if it's just by a little bit, remember this gain is so large that if it's different by just a millivolt, that's gonna be a 20 volt difference on the output. And if we don't have a 20 volt input power, maybe if we're limited to plus or minus 10 volts, then we're just going to hit that rail almost immediately. Okay, so we're gonna say our output is gonna be VDD if VN plus is greater than VN minus. Now, on the opposite side, if Vn plus is less than Vn minus, then we're going to hit Vss, okay? So we're gonna hit Vss. So there are only two ways that our output, or there are only two uh, signals our output can take. It can either be Vdd or it can be Vss, okay? So because of this, this is our digital signal. You can see that we're actually comparing these two inputs, okay? So we're comparing the two and we're getting a different signal depending on which one is larger. So this is the very foundation of a comparator, okay? So let's look at a little bit of an example. So let's say that you're designing an outdoor lighting setup, okay? Now, if you have maybe some lights in your yard, you don't want them running all the time because that's just wasting energy, wasting a whole lot of power, and that's something that you're gonna pay for, right? So you don't want them going in the daytime, you only want them going when it's dark and you can't see, okay? So we want to turn on our lights, so our output is going to be high, if the light level goes below a certain threshold. So let's say that we have a light sensor and that we want our lights to turn on whenever that sensor gives us a value less than 2.5 volts. We're gonna say that this output signal is slowly dropping like in the evening and once it goes below two and a half volts, that's when we want to turn our lights on, okay? So this is a very good application of a comparator. So let's first look at this input power. So we have 10 volts is our VDD and our VSS is zero volts, okay? So we have VDD is 10 volts and VSS is zero volts. So what we have done here is that we 
have our light signal. So this is our voltage from our light detector. Okay, so our voltage from our light detector. And let's draw this out a little bit. So let's see maybe what this looks like. So V light. So let's say that we're approaching the evening. So it's gonna start getting a little bit darker. So we start off maybe in the evening and then once the sun starts going down, it's gonna start getting darker and darker and darker until we eventually hit zero. Okay, and this is just gonna continue until daytime. Now I'm gonna switch colors and I'm gonna draw out our 2.5 volts. Okay, so let's say that this is our, oops, let's say that this is our 2.5 volts right here. So this is our 2.5 volts. So this is fixed. So this is our positive input is 2.5 volts. So I'll rename this to as VN plus. And then this other one, oops, this other one is going to be VN minus. So let me switch back to red, VN minus. All right, so in the very, very beginning, okay? So in the very, very beginning, we start off with our minus terminal, our VN minus, is greater than our VN plus, okay? So if our minus terminal is greater than VN plus, let's write, our, write out our equation just to be complete. Let's say we have AV times VN plus minus VN, VN minus, okay? So VN plus minus VN minus. So if our VN minus is greater than our VN plus, this AV is going to cause it to get really, really large in a negative way, okay? So it's going to hit the rails. If we also look back at this equation here, we can see that if our VN minus is greater than our VN plus, we're just gonna hit VSS. So that means that our output down here, our output is going to be zero volts. Our output is gonna be zero volts, okay? And it's gonna stay that way until we reach this point here. So whenever we reach that point here, that is where our VN plus is now greater. Okay, so our VN minus or our light sensor has gone below this 2.5 volt threshold that we set. So because it's below this 2.5 volt threshold, we know it's getting darker outside and we want our lights to turn on. So that is exactly what's going to happen. So at this point, our output is gonna go up and it's gonna stay that way, right? So this is going to hit 10 volts because that is our VDD, okay? So this is a pretty simple application of a comparator. So we can see that as that light signal goes down or as our light starts to decrease, once it hits that point, we're going to turn our lights on, okay? So they're gonna flip, or they're gonna flip on, and then they're gonna stay that way until maybe in the future, this light signal goes back up, they're gonna turn back off because like we said, we don't want them on if it's light outside. So once that light goes back up, then we're gonna turn those lights off so our output would go off. Now, there is a little bit of a problem with this configuration, okay? So let's kind of repeat what we were doing. So let's do our V light. So let's say that we have a little bit of a noisy input, okay? So maybe instead of having your light sensor far above everything else, you have a tree or something in the way, or maybe it's a high foot traffic area and there are people walking across it, maybe blocking out the light from that light sensor. So instead of having that nice clean decline like we had before, your light sensor maybe is reading something like this. So now that looks a little bit messier. We have these little little bitty bits of noise in here. So maybe someone's walking in front of it, maybe the tree sways a certain way, blocks out the light periodically. So your light sensor thinks it's starting to get dark. Let's switch back to blue. Now let's say we have our threshold set right here. Okay, so we have our threshold set right here is our 2.5 volts. And remember, this is our VN plus, our positive input, and the red is our VN minus. Oops. This red is VN minus. So what's gonna happen here? So let's try and figure out what our output is gonna look like. So V out. Well, in the very beginning, we do start off with our minus above our plus. So we're gonna start off at zero. So we're gonna hit zero volts because we are saturated hitting the rails. And at this point, our minus goes below our plus. So whenever it goes below our plus, we're going to flip our lights on. But then almost immediately after, what we can see happening is that our VN minus or our light sensor is detecting more light. So we're gonna flip our lights on and then we're gonna say, oh, nope, it's light outside. So we're gonna flip them back off and then turn them back on, okay? So we're gonna flip them off, excuse me. And then after another point, we flip them back on, okay? So 
Is this a problem? Maybe in this case it's not too big of a problem, but if you have a whole lot of noise on this input, so if it's crossing over a whole bunch of times, it's going to be pretty annoying, right? It's going to be super duper annoying to watch and see that if you're sitting on your front porch and your lights flick on and off and flick on and off over and over again. So some really smart people actually figured out a way to fix this, okay? So this problem is that we have a noisy input and that translates to noise on our output, which we don't want. And the way we can fix this is actually using something called a Schmidt trigger, okay? Schmidt trigger, underline that here. And it's just a different version of a comparator. So we're gonna see what happens, okay? So we still have our same two and a half volt voltage here, except now we have a couple of resistors, okay? So we have a 1K and a 9K resistor here. And they're gonna allow us to do something pretty cool. So let's say that we are starting off, I'll say this is V light, okay? So this is our V light, and let's say that we still have this same kind of noisy input here, okay? So we just have a little bit of noise problem right here. So with our previous configuration, we would expect our lights to turn on, turn off, and then turn back on again. But this kind of allows us to fix that. So let's say that we are starting at the very beginning and our lights are off, okay? So this is our V out right here, and our lights are off. So we know that this is going to start off at zero volts, okay? Now, before we said that no current is flowing into these input terminals, okay? So the only way for current to flow here is through these resistors. So what that's gonna do is that that's actually gonna create a voltage drop. So that you might be able to tell that if we have no current here and if you simplify this whole op amp schematic, that this just looks like a voltage divider. And what we end up having is that we actually end up having 2.25 volts right here. You should work this out, see it for yourself, make sure that this math is making sense to you. So because we don't have any current flowing here, we just have 2.5 volts here at the very beginning and zero volts here at the end, we know that there has to be some current flu flowing through those resistors creating that voltage drop. So we start off with 2.25 volts on our positive input, okay? So let's just say this is our VN plus, and we're gonna start off with 2.25 volts, okay? So I'll put that here, 2.25 volts. Now, what's gonna happen is that maybe at this point right here, let me back this up a little bit. So we start off at 2.25 volts, and then maybe at that point right there, we start to cross over, okay? So on our V out, we're gonna start off at zero, and at that point, we're gonna cross over. So our V out is going to go all the way up to 10 volts, okay? So I'll write 10 volts here. So our V out's gonna go up to 10 volts. Now, instead of having this zero volts right here on our output, we have 10 volts, okay? So we have 10 volts here, two and a half volts down here. So now the current is going to actually flip directions. Okay, so we have that current flipping directions. And what this does is that this creates a whole different voltage divider, okay? So now, instead of having 2.25 volts here, this value changes, okay? So we can do a little bit of math to figure out what's happening here. So we have a seven and a half volt drop across these two resistors. Okay, these two resistors here because we have two and a half volts down here and 10 volts up at the very top. And if we do the math on that, we're gonna see that we have 7.5 divided by 10, okay, because we only have 10% of that left, or 10% of that voltage drop here. And if we add that to our 2.5 volts, we actually get 3.25 volts here, okay? And again, you should make sure you're doing this, and if you have questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer them if I'm being unclear about anything here. So we have 3.25 volts at this point now. So whenever our output flips, our VN plus actually flips too. Or it doesn't flip, it actually changes. So it goes all the way up to 3.25 volts. So it goes up to 3.25 volts. And if we plot that over here with our VN minus, just to make it a little bit clearer, I'll switch to blue. So we start off at, let's say 2.25 volts, oops start off at 2.25 volts, and then right there, we're flipping, okay? So right there, our output flips, and our VN plus also flips. So whenever that happens, now we don't have this noise problem anymore. So it, our output would have to come, or our input would have to come up really, really high in order to flip that output back off again, okay? Which it's probably not gonna do until it actually becomes morning again. So what we'll see is that even though we still have this maybe noisy output, or this noisy input, excuse me, our output is not noisy at all. It's just gonna stay high, okay? So 
This kind of creates a moving target and gets rid of that noise problem because you don't want your lights flickering on and off. You also don't want your digital signal flickering on and off. You usually want it to stay on when it's supposed to be and stay off when it's supposed to be. So kind of having this moving target or having your VN plus change is going to make sure that it only turns on once and turns off once and you're not going to have this noise problem anymore. Okay, so if you're not believing me, I do encourage you to use some LT Spice or some circuit simulation software just to let this make a little bit more sense to you and see that even if you have a noisy input, this maybe helps your output a little bit not be as noisy. Okay, so this is all I've got for you on comparators because they are very simple. In the next videos, we're going to be looking at amplifiers followed by oscillators. Okay, so these are some really cool applications of these op amps, super duper important stuff and it can allow you to do some really powerful stuff with these op amps. So like I said before, if you do have any questions or comments or concerns, please feel free to leave them in the comments section. If you do like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. It helps me out, motivates me quite a bit. Other than that, I will see you guys next time.